I feel like we've been planning this for a long time. We have, because like, I don't know, we were going to do it before I left, and there's just a lot of stuff going on. No, we were going to do it when the season ended, too. Right, we were. Yeah, we've just been busy. Then I got sad. Uh, yeah. Because we had some dates planned, and we were like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. And then... Yeah, no, I I was geeked. I was like, man, I'm super excited to do this. I know you were, too. Yeah, y'all, literally, in my little, like, notes, it says, um... For Jax, it says, like, don't peek at it. Oh, my bad. I'm tripping. My bad. It says uh, seven months ago. Seven months. Yeah. Well. When was seven months ago? I'm bad at math. End of, a little before end of season? Yeah. Ooh. Like a month before end of season? Mm-hmm. That's great. Whoa. That's crazy to think about. But It was seven months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Time flies. Anyways, thank you for finally... Um, joining me on the podcast yeah i'm excited to be here thank you for having me bro no i have just been wanting to do this for so long i have like so many ideas but obviously like for everlyn shout out yeah. <laughs> fl r.i.p r.i.p <laughs> it's not officially ending ending but like it was just a lot and i feel like you said i'm feeling more like myself again doing things that make me happy yeah you definitely do seem happier like being almost exclusively mm-hmm. like behind the camera doing creative stuff yeah. like this like it's like a huge weight has just been like lifted off my shoulder like yeah i'm still getting anxiety looking at that box over there <laughs> like okay i still have a lot i mean not a lot normally there's way more bins like okay that clear one right there's normally three of those in here i put them in the other room. I mean, I've, I've worked with you at them tournaments. Like You've carried it, those bins. It, I've carried those bins. I know, I know that word. I know You're that right. word. My bad. My bad. But yeah, that's a lot. So, Mr. College Athlete. Now. now what I have am, you now. been up to? Um, So, I just got back from my first two months at Texas. Um, we had eight weeks of kind of like summer workouts and things. Mm-hmm. Um. Three, three to four workouts a day, definitely four days a week. Um, just kind of getting used to college. You what, said four workouts? Know, like three, three to four. What y'all be doing? Well, we have practice in the morning, mm-hmm. and then we have weights, and then we have individual workouts, mm-hmm. but then you still got to get your shots up. So three days, about right. three days a week, it's four workouts a day. Mm-hmm. Two days a week, it's like two workouts a day. Don't miss it. <laughs> Man, Don't it's it's it. not easy. It's not easy. But I will say this, like being at Duncanville, like bro, if I had gone to Texas from like I'm not going to shout out any other high schools, but like if I went to Texas from like a different high school, Cedar Hill. DeSoto. Okay, well, well, ch- ch- <laughs> I'm just ch- well, Chisholm at Cedar Hill. No, no. I know what you mean. I know. You would have got me right. But like a different high school, yeah. I wouldn't have No, I wouldn't mm-hmm. have been ready. But that's honestly like what everyone says when they leave. Dude, because it's facts. Like, I see these other dudes coming in, like, from other colleges, mm. and they're, like, dying in yeah. workouts. And I'm like, bro, like, this is light. We doing three-man weave, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's crazy. Um, What do you remember first about, like, meeting me? That's, like, the question that I ask. I know you've listened, so, like. Yeah, no, I've listened. What are your, been. like, first Britney moments? And then I'm going to tell you my first Jack moments. I think. We were at Duncanville, and I remember you were talking to JB. Of course. And I was like, oh, "Look, he's right here. Where is he? He's, he's oh, he's uh, back behind me." Shout out JB. Shout out JB, my guy. Um, but yeah, no, I think you were. I think we were in the arena or something. And you were talking to JB. I think it was on a game day. And you were over there talking, and I was like, "You know me. I'm very like outgoing, like mm-hmm. wanting to meet new people, all that good stuff." So I was like, "All right." Let me go holler at the new camera lady. That's what I knew. Yeah, I didn't know your name. I was just like camera Not lady. Not the new camera lady. Yeah. Well, because I was like, I was like, wait, does she like work for JB or like, because mm-hmm. like I seriously thought like you were JB's official. Camera I mean, lady. at that time, I might as well have been. You might as well have been. Yeah. But then they were like, yeah, no, like that's Brit. Like she's cool. Go talk to her. And I'm like, all right, bet. So then I came up and I talked to you and you're just like, hi, I'm, I'm Brittany. And I was like, I was like, hey, what's up? And then. What was it now? Four or five years later? Going on five. Going on five, yeah. That's pretty accurate. I think my first, like, real true Jackson moment came, like, JV was playing at Skyline. My dad was coaching at Skyline. Yeah, and that's right. 
you had your little buzz cut, your skinny buzz cut. Y'all were wearing the blue boy, the blue uniforms. And I remember my mom was just like, why can't our kids shoot like him? <laughs> Literally, because, you know, my mom is like one of your like biggest fans. Oh, yeah. Like, on the Love court. your mom. So Love my mom was like, who is that? I'm like, mom, that's Jackson, like blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. And then honestly, after that, I feel like we got close probably more your junior year. My, yeah, because I mean, we, we were cool my sophomore year. Yeah, but then we my, ju- my cool. junior year, we got like tight. Mm-hmm. And then from there, just. What what's funny about that skyline game though was like she's saying that, but I was for real like two for eight. Like I did not like bro, that skyline game at Skyline was What about when terrible you played me. Skyline at home? Do you remember that one? When I played Skyline at home I did well. Yeah, I, I think maybe because my mom came to that game too, so yeah, she's yeah. probably like that yeah. Yeah, no. Love her mom though. Me too. Yeah. I wish she was here. She normally works from home a couple of days a week, but mm. yeah, I was wondering if she was going to be up here, but no. Yeah. Okay. So obviously the name of the podcast is off days. How do you like to spend your off days? Cause you're a busy guy, man. Like <laughs> Sundays are my off days. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, a you know, like a typical off day, I'll probably wake up at like 8 a.m. And so you don't see that. In- that is sleeping in you're right for you yeah well i mean when i was in high school i was waking up at 4 15 every morning yeah you're right yeah so i i was i would wake up at like eight i'd get some breakfast you know whatever chill i would probably look over some business stuff because you know business owner Mm -hmm. um so i would look over some business stuff maybe edit some of my own content that i put out um and then maybe get a workout in that's not an off day like weightlifting I mean, like weightlifting is, you know, I might as well be an off day. I got to do something. But like. You're supposed to rest. That That's optional for me on my off days. But like. Yeah. Yeah. Get some lunch. Maybe at Texas, I would go chill in one of my teammates' rooms. Like, Do you ever take naps? If I'm really tired, I take naps on my non, or like my on days. Because mm-hmm. like, like. Between the madness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, my off days are. It's nothing crazy. I just like to work on business or content stuff. I like to record a lot on my off days. Mm -hmm. So what are you saying is he doesn't really have an off day and that's why he's successful? Well, I'm getting there. I'm working on it. It's stacking wins. Stacking wins. That's that's how I see it. So for those of you that don't know, I'm sure everyone knows, like, Jack is literally one of, like, the most, like, one of the smartest people that I know. What was your GPA? 4.0. 4.0 valedictorian you're one of like the hardest working people that i've like ever been around like everything about you just like you inspire me to just like you know do what i do like um christian athlete walk on at ut and now like you're doing like all of this like business stuff so like where we kind of talked about like the time but like yeah. where does all of this like come from like you're to me you're still like so young but you're like doing so much at a young age that it's just like wow like you're not doing things that like normal 19 year old student athletes are doing yeah i mean it comes from a few different places Mm. but i grew up with a single dad um i never knew who my mom was so it was just me and my dad and my dad um I mean, he could have been a very, very successful aerospace engineer, Mm -hmm. um, but he decided to be a father. So like that, and he worked his tail off to give me, give me everything that I could ask for. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and, and from a young age, I was just, he taught me how to work really, really hard because I was seven and I was like, yeah, I want to be in the NBA. And he was like, all right, if you want to be in the NBA, you got to work like it. So from there, it was 40 hours a week. I was seven years old, 40 hours a week until I was last week. So <laughs> last week, yeah, <laughs> till, till last week. But it was, it was, he just taught me how to work, work really, really hard. And he showed me the benefits of sacrifice because had wow. I not worked that hard, I would have never won three state championships or any of that. Yeah. And then like the business stuff, honestly, I know that business takes time. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I want to be a millionaire by 22. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't know if I'll get there or not, but I know that if I take those steps every single day, yeah. I'm giving myself a chance. Yeah. Okay. So we got like the basketball side of it, 
But when did the like business side like click? Um, Cause you didn't really like talk to me about it much like your yeah. sophomore year. And I feel like your senior year, we really just kind of like had these conversations about just like business and money and everything. So when did it really kind of like click to like start making content and like taking it seriously? Well, it, the, the thing clicked before I ever really started business, mm -hmm. but my mindset shift was my sophomore year. Um, PV brought me into the coach's office and I literally like this mindset shift. I almost fully credit it to what PV said to me that day. Mm -hmm. And which is why I respect him so much. And he goes, he's asking me about my, my career goals. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. like, of course I want to play in the NBA, but you know, if that doesn't work out, you know, maybe I'll be a high school coach or, or a college coach or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, I can work my way up the ladder and, you know, eventually have a really steady job and all this stuff. And he just, he told me to like, shut up. <laughs> he was, like, he was for real, like, bro, like stop talking. And I was like, like, I felt disrespected. I was like, bro, like, I thought that's a good plan. Like, that's mm -hmm. what everybody does. And he goes, Jack, why climb the ladder when you can own it? Did he really? That's verbatim. That's wow. what he said. And yeah. that quote is in my head every single day. So that's when, like, that was like my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. That right there was like, oh, shoot, I got to start looking at things differently. Yeah. And then. That's tough. Yeah. Like, late junior year, I was like, all right, what can I do for business? I just started reading books. I just started reading books, looking at all types of different business models and things, trying to figure out what I would have been successful at. Mm -hmm. I have tried, I started cleaning shoes for people. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I got really good at restoring shoes. Yeah. Um, but it was too time consuming mm -hmm. and I just didn't, I just didn't love it. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't excited about it. There's nothing glamorous about it, which I thought entrepreneurship was glamorous. You know, it's not, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yeah, entrepreneurship is hard, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I failed, I, I say I failed, but I learned from, seven different businesses i trained kids in basketball for a while yeah, i did i did drop shipping i did oh, yeah that's right i did all types of stuff and now i run my own marketing uh social media marketing and content creation agency and i have a six-person media team and and we got some clients you now. go we're jack rolling. We're, ro we're rolling we're rolling no that uh, that's mo way more than what like that's more way like than people like what i'm like doing and stuff like that so that's like i mean you know this. It didn't come without a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Like, be my teammates were my own my only real friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. I just recently got some real non basketball friends. Yeah. Like very recently, like within the last six months. And yeah, I mean, it, it's been great though. Yeah. I, I love every second of it. Yeah, I just like the balance and just like using basketball to take you to like other places like besides just like basketball and just like you being at UT the people that you're gonna meet and yeah. things like that is just gonna be huge for that like it's so much more than just like playing basketball yeah um but we do have to talk about 100% the basketball like 100%. Jack loves basketball as much as I do first of all like how do you feel like looking at all this Kansas stuff on the wall <sighs> in here it breaks my heart Britt it breaks my heart. I'm not going to lie to you. See that one, national championship? Yeah, I see it. I see it. It's all good. I'm going to have one in my room <laughs> like that, uh, except it's going to be burnt orange. Ew. Hook them horns, baby. Um. Anyways, <laughs> how was your Duncanville experience? And I I mean, I can't believe that. I'm to go in, Brett. I can't believe that I. Are you crying? No. What? Oh, no. I thought you were crying. No. What? I thought you were crying. Lock in, Britt. Okay. No, like, I was there for, like, most of it. Mm -hmm. all, pretty much all of it. You saw, you saw all the real, like, yeah. the, the meat of it. Yes. So, tell us about it. Man, playing at Duncanville was the hardest thing I have ever had to do in my entire life. Yeah. It is not even close. But it was also the most rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. Like... You know this, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it more throughout this episode. But, like, I was the only white kid on the team. I was the only white person yeah, in the we're program. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. I was the only white person in the program. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard. 
yeah the stuff mentally nothing physically like the physical stuff is not what i remember about it as far as like being hard like yes we we worked harder than every other high school team in the country and a lot of college teams yeah just point blank period you don't believe me go watch the vlogs go watch the vlogs go go watch the go watch the vlogs so like i don't know it it was tough but it was also very very Mm eye-opening um i feel like god put me in that situation to learn about what it's like being different yeah and how to survive when no one around you looks like you talks like you comes from the same family as you yeah that's also i think how we started like bonding because i grew up being the only black girl like on my team in my program and i watched the video you posted i think last week about just like identity and things like that and it's just so relatable for me because like I wasn't around like other black people Mm -hmm. and like black teammates until I got to like college and um like my AAU teammates were mostly black from inner city Denver I lived in Boulder which was like suburban white right um so it was just like I was constantly in a limbo of like who am I like you know, I went through the stages of like trying to like impress people and like Man. getting people to like oh. you. And it was just like, oh. I finally was just like, ha- you know, looked in the mirror and I'm just like, who am I? Like, nah, facts. I had that same moment. It's crazy. That same moment. And it's like one day you just wake up and you just look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, bro, I've been worried about all these other people. Yeah. I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah. Like, well, how did you overcome all that? So, I think it was middle of my sophomore year Um, because freshman year I was, you know, I was trying to get as many Jordans as possible, which I love. I love wearing Jordans. Mm -hmm. Like I would have done that regardless. But like he's got them on right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I got uh, got these. Yeah, these 12s on. Um, But like, I don't know, like just the my mannerisms and things like, yeah, it's not like Brett. I am a southern hospitality southern gentleman country boy yeah like that is where like my family mm-hmm. like my dad is from decatur alabama that's where he was born i'm i was born in nashville tennessee yeah so like i don't know I, and I, I just started acting different and like i don't know yeah. the people that were closest to me started looking at me kind of funny because i wasn't being me mm-hmm. and i woke up one morning i went into the went into my bathroom looked at myself in the mirror and i was like bro Quit, quit, yeah. quit with all the foolishness, man. Yeah. Like, just be Jackson Prince. Mm-hmm. And when that clicked in my head, dude, I didn't care. I don't, I, to this day, I don't yeah. really care about what other people think of me. I think for me, it was like, I learned that people respected me more for being myself. 100%. Because once I got to college, you know, I had teammates that came, you know, from a very different background as me. And like... I can't pretend to know what it's like to have a parent in jail or to grow up a certain way. You know what I mean? Right. Like I am suburban Brittany, but that yeah. doesn't make me any less, you know, like black or whatever. Right. And so it was like, you know, once I was just like myself, I felt like people just respected me more for like being my naturally quirky, goofy self than like trying to pretend I'm like this like hard person when yeah I'm, no facts, facts. <laughs> i'm from facts. boulder colorado facts. like <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i grew up in rougher areas like i i that is one thing where like that does kind of connect me to some of my teammates and people that i've played with is like like i did grow up in yeah in rougher area like i was in mcallen texas like mm-hmm. i'm going to elementary school with like el chapo's niece and stuff like like i saw and heard of things and attended funerals that i never should have right so like that kind of helped me connect with people more but like being the you know pretty white boy it's like (laughs) you you know like like people don't people don't look at you the same especially especially in the community that we're in yeah yeah in terms of just like your game on the court though like how do you think, you know, being the only white kid, number one team on the nation, like, you were a fan favorite, like, 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody knew when Jackson was coming in the game, like a three is going up, seeing the gym kind of like fold, you know what I mean? Um, just the whole persona of like, you know, white boys play like this way yeah. or whatever. Cause oh, I, I fit that. But I, I like, for me, it was like, I was never like super, super like athletic. Um, so it was like my black teammates told me that I like play like a white girl because I'm like skilled and I'm like yeah. a shooter and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like <sighs> it's just like the narrative of it all is just like so yeah. annoying. Like I think I think for me, I didn't realize I was a fan favorite really until late. Like, mm -hmm. very late. Like, you were always telling me, like, yeah, Jack, like, everybody loves you. And yeah, I'm if like, I didn't post you. Yeah, for real? Yeah, like, like, remember that. when we would do questions, people would be like, mm -hmm. where's Jack? That's what's up. That's Jack, love. Jack, Jack, Jack. But, like, I don't know, man. Like, my game on the court, I was really, all I cared about, and you know this, I don't care if I had zero points or 21 points. Yeah. I just wanted to win. Like, mm -hmm. that was it. Like, if I if we did not win, I was not in i was not in a happy place yeah which didn't happen very often what Thankfully. six losses in my high school career that's crazy that's insane that's insane to think about but six six i think i counted them the other day i think it was six how sophomore year we took two no did we not is it less than six waxahachie bro i don't know it's maybe i'm miscounting you're, Isn't yeah you're miscounting we lost to waxahachie Richardson, Westland, that's the last three years. That's three. So what are you counting? Oh, wait. I didn't lose my freshman year. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Three? Nah, there's got to be another one in there, right? No. The past three years, we've only lost three games. Is Westland, right? Richardson, Waxahachie. Westland. God, I hate that. We're not going to talk about this. Bro, yeah, let's, let's not. I'm going to get mad. But yeah, anyways. No, I, I really, all I would wanted to do was win. Yeah. And like when I went in the game... I knew that I was in the game, it that shot was going up. It had to mm -hmm. because that's why I was in there. Yeah. So anytime I got the ball and I had a little bit of room, it was going up. And it was cool, like seeing the whole bench stand up yeah. and like everybody Such in the crowd feeling. is holding up the three. Like that's awesome. Yeah. That's a really good feeling. How do you think though you were able to like we kind of talked about it yesterday? with your relationship with Ron, but just, like, as a leader who didn't start, really, and, you know, played sparingly minutes, able to just, like, lead. Like, you're telling Ron Holland, like like you said, who's in the G League now, like, yeah. what he needs to do. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think because I had such a good relationship with all the guys, mm -hmm. they – and they also saw, like, I'm fully convinced – historically over my four years i was the hardest worker in the program yeah i i there's a couple other names that might come to mind but i i worked harder than everyone mm -hmm. and they saw that so i kind of earned that respect from them and yeah. like you know like Dude, once you earn your teammates respect oh, yeah. it's like yeah well and and what was even better with with ron is we lived together on the road yeah that was my mind roommate. you y'all two hated each other sophomore year no okay so let, let me hate let me bring this back bro let me bring this back it was not ron is easily a top three friend of mine like really really wholesome dude love him and freshman and sophomore year we would have been okay if need if the other person didn't exist like we it was like that i know i used ron, to be in the me middle me and about ron it. used to get into it man over and like weren't it, there lockers next to each other yeah yeah they were and, and and like he would just man like i would tell him something in practice and he would just blow up and i would get right back in him and it's like it was rough wait tell them about how like the first road trip of this year we're in Memphis, <laughs> and they're reading out the rooming list yeah so we are we're in memphis it, yeah we're in memphis and well, no, I was sick in Memphis. I didn't room with Ron. It was before that, wasn't it? Texarkana or something? No, Memphis was the first, Memphis was the first one. Okay. Well, they, I think Ron was about to commit to Texas or had he already? I can't remember. I can't remember. But it, he was like, we kind of knew he was going to Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, was. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah, I can't talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we, we knew. Um, 
And at that point, I believe I was already committed. And he, the coaches were like reading out. They were like telling us like, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you and Ron are going to room together. So that Ron didn't believe it. And he wasn't like mad about it, but like, yeah. So they're reading out the room list and they're like, Ron and Jack. And Ron's like, bro. What? Literally everyone on the team was like. Yeah, no, it, it was laughing. the first name. It was so It was the funny. first names that they read. We it was, like, it was, you it was Ron and Jack. And I was like, oh my God, bro. Like I wanted to have fun this trip. Like I was like, it was our first and trip. And then they ended years. up rooming together the rest of the After season. that trip. Besties. Ron asked to room with me every single trip that we went on. And we did. And it was a blast. Besties. That It was so fun. We yeah. made Oregon not having phones in our room fun. Do we have to talk about Oregon? Oh my god, that was the worst trip ever. They did us so wrong, bro. Ever. Dude, okay, we're so not wrong. gonna talk about it because that's the next vlog I'm I'm gonna post. Oh, okay. But like, my fault. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. God. No, me me and Ron's relationship really grew in in the last year and a half, and now like shoot, I mean we we talk all the time. It was just like the duo you never knew mm. you needed. Duo you never knew you needed. Like. Yeah. I, player, I wanted him to kid. go to Texas because, like, y'all would have just together. It would have been, like... Yeah. It would have been really fun. Yeah, but I, I I will say this publicly. Like, I told Ron. Ron called me, and he was like, yeah, I'm probably out. And I was like, man, come over. He came over, sat out in the car, and we were just talking. I told him, I was like, dog, whatever your decision is, bro, like, I stand on that. I stand by you a hundred percent. Yeah, me too. Like, regardless of everything, like. I mean, maybe yeah. he just should have went to Kansas. All right, bro. <laughs> All right, bro. Ron, go get that money, bro. Go get that money. No, I honestly think he made the right decision just because, like, Ron wants to play basketball. Yeah. He doesn't want to go to school. I mean, I don't blame him. Like, he, pay me to he do doesn't want to go to. He doesn't want to go to academic meetings and like he just wants to hoop. Yeah. And that's what he's best at that's yeah. what he's got to do if you're I, good enough to get paid for it do like, it yeah like i think selfishly i would have just loved to see him be like a college superstar because i love college yeah. basketball but um everyone's yeah. path is different and i'm proud of him for making that hard decision and like doing that and yeah no i mean i mean himself so and and what i really appreciate about that situation is like his parents did did like help him make that decision, yeah. but like it was like all on Ron. Mm-hmm. Like I talked to Ron's mom, and she's like, "That's like his this like this is his life." Yeah, and I'm like, man, like that that for Ron is so good because we're used to seeing him as a child. I still see him as a child. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's always gonna be a little child to me. I see him very differently now, but like, no, he's matured yeah. so. Nah, dude, his his growth has been crazy. Yeah, it's been. It's been crazy to see just like the progress of everyone, like yeah. the fact that AB is like went six. Like I, it's just crazy because to me, like bro, I played with always... AB in fifth grade. Yeah, like, like I knew back then he was gonna be one of those dudes. It's just like to me, y'all are always just like my little bros. You know what I mean? Yeah, like facts. in the gym, and even just like you know, yesterday past two days being up there with like rylan and case and micah everyone Zarek, like you know what i mean like we've all like grown together the past like five years and like you know s- seeing the video that i posted of rylan people are like oh can we post this and i'm like huh like it's just rylan and then i'm yeah. like okay wait <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's no. not you know to just it ain't just right like yeah like, it's just it's just crazy um the growth but yeah I did want to talk to you about just like what it means to you to be like a Christian and to be open about that because I feel like for me um like when I was in high school like it wasn't cool to just like be the Christian girl or qu- Christian kid it wasn't I mean, as, it's like, still not it's not as I, I feel like it's better though because like you can find communities and people on social media that are open about it but I feel like for me more so it was just like yeah. you know yeah. not what it is now so like what is what does that mean to you to just like be so like deep in your faith to help you like get you know to this jackson prince <laughs> well i wouldn't be able to be jackson prince if it weren't for my faith mm-hmm. like me being able to put everything in god's hands and just like back up mm-hmm. like that has done so much 
for my mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional health, and like my physical health too. Yeah. And it, it w- and it's why I was able to really like stay at Duncanville and and thug it out. And yeah. it's because like I knew that everything was gonna be okay. Yeah. Like I knew like God has my back always, and I wouldn't be the person I am today if I wasn't a Christian. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm so open about it is because like. I have people who watch what I do and it's like, I wouldn't be doing the things that I do now if it wasn't for my faith in Jesus, like point blank period. That's deep though, because it's like, it really is true. Like if you don't have that relationship, I feel like nowadays with just like social media and just like getting in with like the wrong crowd, like. Well, you get, you get told by everyone now that you're not enough Mm -hmm. and, and like, that's just not true. And I feel it too. Like I'll be scrolling on TikTok and I'll see all these people yeah. doing all these amazing things. And I feel like I'm failing because oh, I'm yeah. not driving supercars in Dubai. Yeah. But then it's like, I got to like reel myself back in. And I'm like, bro, like, like you it's are. A false that, reality it's a too. false it's reality. A false reality. It's a false reality. And it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just, I'm very, very thankful that I was introduced to that at such a young age. Yeah. I think especially, too, as just an athlete, um, everything that you have to, like, go through and just, like, you know, like, injuries and just the grind of it all, like, just knowing, like, having that identity in Christ and just, like, knowing, like you said, like, that, like, you said it perfectly, like, you know that everything is going to be okay because of that relationship and because of, like, what the Bible, what he says, like, who you are and not what, you know social I'm, media your friends and like say. i've found myself in very very tough situations and it's like or we're like situations where there's like man like there's no way i'm gonna succeed mm-hmm. like there's no way i'm gonna come out on top on this and then it's just like one little thing shifts some behind the scenes thing happens and it's like just opens up everything for yeah, you you're like how did that happen like how did that happen like how <laughs> how yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome. It's one of my favorite parts about my life for sure. What advice would you give to kids that are maybe struggling, you know, with their identity or just like, you know, like we talked about, whether it's fitting in like racially or just like kids trying to like be cool or like whatever that whole thing is um, for the kids out there? What advice? At some point, trying to be cool isn't cool anymore. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's 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 not. Yeah. What's cool is understanding who you are and really just leaning into that. Yeah. And also, and look, this is an example that I tell the people that I talk to all the time. A dollar bill in America is just worth a dollar, mm-hmm. right? But a dollar, a U.S. dollar in a foreign country might be worth a whole lot more. So if you feel like you're not worth anything, change the environment around you. Yeah. Because if the people that are around you aren't making you feel like you are worth something and if they're not pushing you to be something better, yeah, then you need to change the people who are around you. And for the longest, I was around people who just made me not feel very good about myself. Oh, 100%. For a long time. Yeah. I think kind of like what I said earlier, just like people will respect you for just like being yourself. And I feel like so many times now kids will dressed a certain way, post certain pictures, listen to certain music, you know, like, I feel like that's why I've been able to just, like, have so many re- good relationships with you guys is just, like, I'm not going to change, like, who I am, mm-hmm. like, from the music that I listen to, the clothes that I wear, like, yeah. you know, just, like, be yourself, like, you shouldn't be a- ashamed of, like, the hobbies that you like, the things that you're interested in to like fit in. And like, like you said, like to me, like being different is cool. Like I don't want to be like everyone else. I feel like, I feel like that's why my brand has been, you know, what it is the past couple of years is because when I started, like I was nice to everyone, you know, I showed everyone love. I respected everyone. And I was just like myself, like, I don't like, go into like basketball games just trying to like fit in and be cool like no like i'm quirky i i trip over things like i'm a little bit nerdy and i i love that about myself like i'm you know what i mean like i'm a nerdy little hooper like i'm you know like 
a tomboy. I like wearing, you know, shoes, but I'm also like very girly and like to paint my nails, but I'm not, you know, yeah. I mean, like think about it. Like I'm me. <laughs> and, and this is like, when it comes to like the clothes that I wear, I have been jeans and Jordan since day one. And, mm-hmm. I, and I get a lot of crap because I wear jeans. Like if you see no, me Jackson out, I'm probably always, every day. I wear jeans every single day. We and I've been to the gym and like everyone else is in sweats and Jackson might have on his leather jacket. And, and his tight little jeans and Jordans every day, and he rocks jeans. it. He hey, owns it. My, hey, I got nice legs, not, man. We're not That's changing for nobody. Jeans. No facts. We're so like, I'm nobody. I'm jeans, Jordans, and country music. That's like, bro. I listen to yeah. Morgan Wallen all the time, yeah. and it's like, I don't care who's in the car with me. Like, mm-hmm. I might get crap for it. I don't care. Yeah. I like the music, so I'm for just, sure. Like, that's why I stopped listening to rap music, man. Yeah. Too many negative messages. And it's like, I'm not going to fill my head with all that. Yeah. It's okay if you do. I'm not bashing rap music, but like, yeah. it's just not for you, me. You sing along to some of it sometimes, for sure. like in the locker room. but For like, sure. Yeah. Of course I do. Because it's fun. Like, do you remember when we did the, um, we did the game day playlist? And at first you mm-hmm. were like, are you sure you want mine? And yeah. I was like, yes. Like, How many rap songs were there? Like one? One, I think. Like one out of like I was like, like Jack, six. like, no, some kid out there is going to see that and be like, okay, like, I like Lil Baby, but I don't got to, yeah. like, listen to... I forgot what I had on there. I was like, we'll look it up. We'll I had, like, some R&B and, B and, like, yeah. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? That's my just, playlist like, the was same very... thing, like, Bug listening to, like, old school music. Like, mm-hmm. all his was, like... I'm like, how do you even know yeah, this? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bug but it's the like, youngest old head ever. Yeah, just, like, being being yourself and owning it, for sure. Dude, you got to, man. You got to. How are you supposed to get through life not really honing in on who you are? Like, I see... Like, yeah. I talk to a lot of adults... And I see 40 year olds who are just now figuring out what, like who they are inside. And they're just now figuring it out. And it's like, dang, like they wish they would have found out sooner. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people that try to do like social media and branding and influence or whatever, like those brands fail because people can see right through it. Like you being fake. And I feel like that's one thing I've tried to do is just like, always like be myself like literally you can see who we are just from like what we're wearing like i knew that you i knew that you were gonna wear like a nice shirt and that and like i'm i mean always in my hoodies and like stuff you know what i mean like i'm gonna be me like i'm not facts i'm not changing up for anybody like like cj posted me on his story the other day and he was like just a casual day hunjay prince and i was wearing button down some jeans Mm -hmm. and i and i was like yeah bro just a casual day like i'm not wearing a suit right okay yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, just got to be you, man. Um, The last thing we'll kind of end with is just kind of like, have you had a chance to reflect on what we've done at Duncanville? Like, has it, you got yeah. the ring? Yeah, I mean, it, like, man. Duncanville was such a crazy experience, and it was not normal at all. No. Nothing about that experience was normal. It was hard. I feel like people don't, from the outside looking in, like, I mean, I mean obviously, like, I didn't play in the games, but I was there every day and the travel and just, like, the work. Like, how many times did I was like, I'm out, Coach PB. Like, yeah, I quit. You, you said it a few times. Yeah. And I'm and I'm sitting here, and I knew it was hard when you would say that, and I was like, man, I don't blame her. Yeah. Like, it's tough, man. It's not for everyone, for sure. Like It's not, bro. And it takes Juan, a certain kind of... Juan said it best. He said, you really got to sit there and think if you are about to transfer to Duncanville. Like, re- really prioritize. Pray about it. Pray about fast, it. Whatever like, you got to what, do. Whatever you got to do, bro. Oh, like, my gosh. Think on it for days, weeks, months before you make that decision. Yeah. Because th- it's hard, man. We have good players in our program. We have had good players in our program. Who never touched the court. Mm-hmm. Like I'm thinking of dudes that I played with who just graduated with me. And I'm like, bro, like if he would have went to a different school. Yeah. He like, there's no telling what he would have got. Yeah, I mean. But he wouldn't have been a winner. It's definitely a lot of sacrifices. But I think that Coach PV has done a good job of just building that program. Like everyone in that program, he like he says this. And it's 100% true. But like, A, you're like a star in your role. But it's just like elite people that work really hard. And it's like you want to give that program and the the coaches and for me, you guys, like the best that you have. And it's like if you can't meet those standards, whether, you know, you're 
the tenth man on the bench, whether you're Ron Holland, whether you're me taking pictures, whether you're Coach Jay, like you're it's not gonna work because right. we all are there for the same thing and it's just to like be different and help each other and grow and if you can't And I think you you were ask you were saying like asking me like how I started doing the things that I do mm-hmm. and like why I'm different than other nineteen year olds. Yeah. Um, turning twenty next month. That's crazy. Um Oof. yeah, I'm old, man. I'm old. But uh You beat teen pregnancy. Well almost. Bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're celebrating small wins. Yo, Britt, that was crazy. Okay, anyways. Lock in. Lock in. Yeah, we back. All right. <laughs> so, like, you were asking me, like, why I'm different than, like, other 19-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And it is because I was around elite people. Yeah. Like, I talk about circle so heavy. Like, you are an average of the five people that you hang around the most. And I believe in that so strongly and mm-hmm. because i was at duncanville surrounded by elite people who were really successful in what they did yeah all i wanted to do was maximize my own potential and be man. successful in everything that i did man i was telling coach pv the other day like hearing him like talk is just like i, I don't i don't know what i don't know how other him bro, <laughs> like pv just got something bro like, like i don't Golly. And for me, like, I'll be editing video, so I'll hear it over and over again. And I'm just like, I, I got to be so good. I got to be so great. Like, he just has this way of just, like, bringing out the best in people. And I'm just taking pictures and doing in the social la- media. Bro, in the last four and a half years, PV was probably the – not probably. In the last four and a half years, PV was the most influential person in my life. Yeah. Like, I really think hands down. And I said this in, we were doing some seminar at UT Mm -hmm. and they were like, who's the, you know, who's the most like influential person in your life? I was like, bro, my high school coach, coach PD. The goat. The goat. Um, yeah, man. Duncanville is just like so special. Like, I mean, how it looks on the outside though, like it feels like that. It feels like we're a little like. It looks Hollywood. And at times we certainly can be Hollywood. Like for sure. It's fun. It's worth it. It's but worth it's, it. But we work way too hard not to enjoy it. We earned it, though. Like, we are very, like, work hard, play hard type mm-hmm. team. And, uh, like, one thing that I really liked about, like, I think, you know, last year in particular. Yeah. Everybody had a really good relationship with each other. That's what I was going to say. One thing that I love about the team and just, like, being around you guys is that, like, other teams that I've worked with, there's always, like, a couple people that you're just like, oh, like, I yeah. can't, uh, like, oh, that could... It was yeah. never like that. It doesn't matter, like, who's around or who you're with. Like, we were all, like, so close. And it's really funny. I was thinking about how, like, we were, like, so close that, like, if you tell one person, like, some juicy, like, drama, like, yeah. you're telling everybody. Nah, the whole team like, is not no. leaving, but it's not yeah. leaving. But it's not leaving that team. Yeah, it's not leaving yeah. the team. Like, we're not going to tell anyone from the outside, but you better believe. I, like, I, like I, there was one day, no, there was, there was one day. I was like, Ron, oh my God, did you hear da da da? And he was like, Yeah, KJ told me. And I'm like, well, I wanted to tell you. Bro, like, the KJ, number no. of times that that has happened. KJ's like, No, Eric told me. I'm, I'm like, like, Dang, bro, like I just told you yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, so funny. But like, I, I really do mean this. Like, especially the people that I was like really the closest with, mm-hmm. I would take a bullet for pretty much anybody that I played with at Duncanville, that I played with on the varsity level at Duncanville. I really I remember do you said believe. that once yeah. and someone was like, Jack. No, like I would. Hold up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I really would though. So no, like, like, no, like, like, and, and I say Sykes, but like Davion is my oldest friend. Like we went to kindergarten together. Yeah. But like, so that, that's a little different, but like he definitely take a bullet for Sykes. I would take a bullet for Cam Barnes. Like I didn't I really. I feel like you're just being picky now. No, I mean, I would take a bullet for like name a player and I'll, and I'll tell you Evan. yes or no, honestly. Yeah, Evan? Yeah, I would take a bullet. I wouldn't die for Evan, but I'd take a bullet for Evan. <laughs> okay. I would get we shot in the not, shoulder. Okay, like, this that's not where I wanted this to go. <laughs> like I would get shot in the shoulder for Evan. Wait, you know this is gonna go off hinge a little bit. Oh my god. Nah, but like real talk though, like that Duncanville team is like so for, is fun. for real my family. So like, much fun. I'm I'm just ready for the world to just see like the uncut, like the world's not ready for the no, uncut We will be soon. And then I'm going <laughs> to give you the iPad and you're going to be like. And I took. What did Michael Jordan say? Well, like, you know. He's how... like, I took that personally. <laughs> well, all the 
all the fights, all the times we got cussed out, all the times fights. people people got pressed. You know, I mean, like, never mind. I won't tell that story. Not on the podcast. But nah. I'll tell you after. But yeah, like, just all like it's a very high intensity environment. But I think because of that shared suffering, we all bought into each shared other. suffering. I like that. Sh- dude, shared suffering. It's a real thing, man. Because of that shared suffering, we all just bought into each other, mm-hmm. and we were able to hang up banners. Big dubs. Big dubs. I got three rings. I should have four, really. Yeah. But freshman year we did that two for one two for one i was like oh, man. it's all good that's all good i'll take three well thank you for joining me today no nah, thank you Britt. this was this was a lot of fun and yeah. i'm very excited to have you on my podcast yes sir absolutely um anything else you want to say before we play our game game remember i told you oh to shoot you did say a game um anything else i want to say no i think i'm good okay I think I'm good. Oh, tap in tap into my YouTube channel. Yeah, so I'll have everything linked down below in yeah. the YouTube for the video and then for the listeners in the little description thingy. 100%. For sure do that. All right. Awesome. Okay, bye. Say bye. See you guys. Thank <laughs> you all.